Hello, friends, and welcome. Happy New Year. Just wanted to get on here and give you all an update, maybe share a few dreams that I've had. But let's start uh, the way that we always do and jump into our scripture. Lord, please bless the hearing of your word. Give us mighty insights into your plans and what you are doing. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so we've got the book of Nahum, chapter one. I've got a couple of verses, actually one verse, one long verse underlined here. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, okay. So Nahum one, uh, starting with verse seven, the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Actually jumping up to verse three, the Lord is slow to anchor and great in power. The Lord will not leave the guilty unpunished. His way is in the whirlwind and the storm and clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and it dries up. He makes all the rivers run dry. Bashan and Carmel wither. Jumping down to verse 15, look there on the mountains, the feet of one who brings good news, who proclaims peace. Celebrate your festivals, O Judah, and fulfill your vows. No more will the wicked invade you. They will be completely destroyed. So that's very revealing. I mean, I read these things out of order for some reason. I just didn't see the one. Um, but it's so true. The God, our God is good. Yeah, these are going to be hard times. And we're going to see all sorts of storms and the weather. We're going to talk about that a little bit today with one of my dreams. Um, but the end game is victory. We've got to keep that in mind. We've got to keep that in focus. And I'm just, I'm so blessed to make videos for all of you. There are some channels out there that, I mean, the dreams that these people get pretty horrible. And I'm just so blessed to be given a channel where I can give hope and good news. And speaking of dreams, I'll go ahead and jump in. Um, I heard some people share some rapture dreams, and I recently had one myself. My dreams, like I said, um, they're not really doom and gloom or horrific. In fact, you know, I, I shared, I think, that on the last video, my dream about the Antichrist was he's about the size of Yoda, dressed very similarly, but in a black robe, uh, big head. I mean, just nothing that you would be afraid of. And we're not supposed to fear. These are the end times, yes. But it's a cycle that has been written about in the Bible that has occurred in the past. We saw it with the Egyptians. It's going to occur again. I mean, it, it does happen but God's going to go through it with us. And like we saw at the end of last time's video, last week, um, everybody is prepared for a, a path, a plan, a purpose, a reason. And what we saw at the beginning of that same video, I believe it was from Isaiah, God's never going to reject all of his people. He will never, ever reject all of Israel. So pray over these things. Um, let's go ahead and talk about that rapture dream. It was a little kooky. Uh, so I was, we were at a time where there was danger. There was danger. So uh, if we look at Revelation 12, we see that the dragon pursues the woman. Okay, and we've talked about Absalom pursuing his father David. He never caught him, but he had him in chase. The same with Sennacherib. Sennacherib was around the entire city of Jerusalem with his troops. Uh, an Assyrian commander, and just threatening Hezekiah, telling him that the Lord had sent him to punish Jerusalem for her sins. And that's probably very true. And yet Hezekiah prayed, and they were delivered as a city. A Sennacherib got some bad news that troops in another area were coming under attack, and he needed to go elsewhere. He was still breathing, you know, murderous or threatening oaths, to Hezekiah as he left, but he never came back. He never came back. And we can have that same assurance, okay? So continuing on with that dream, I was under like some sort of threat. So 
in my mind, I thought, well, I'm going to go to the grocery store and get something to protect myself. Okay, I know it's, it's a crazy dream. Um, so as I start, apparently I was only a, about a few doors down from the grocery store. So I start running down there, not like sprinting, but just kind of jogging. I ran in the past. Sometimes I still do. But all of a sudden I heard these, like, I can, it felt that one of the dogs, one of our dogs was next to me. So I didn't see her, but we have a good sized dog that you're not going to mess with. Um, I just reached down, didn't look, just reached down, grabbed her collar, and we just ran together because I didn't want to scare everybody. As we were going by the grocery store, I could smell like alcohol and urine. So this was definitely, you know, society is in decay. And as a side note, in reality, I have noticed more gang symbols, more gang graffiti, I should say, being put up. And that is causing me some concern. Absolutely. But continuing with my dream, I, so I'm running. I've got uh, my animal. I think it's my dog next to me. I make it to the outdoor garden display of the grocery store. And there are like some plants. There is an amaryllis, a purple amaryllis, which really there is no such thing. But that caught my eye. Like even as I was leaving, I was still looking at this purple amaryllis. And people know this as a, a Christmas plant. It had very thick, a very thick stem though. Typically amaryllis will not have a thick stem. So the weapon that I chose to grab was like this thorny stem. And as I thought about it later, it's like, that kind of reminds me of the crown of thorns. Um, so I was real quick, I grabbed this thorny stem from out of one of the flower pots, and I'm going back home. And as I'm running, all of a sudden, I don't see my neighborhood anymore. I see the stars, and they are just whizzing by me. And at that moment, I realized I was being raptured. So, you know, kind of as we've talked about before, uh, as we have read in the Bible, as other many other people have had dreams about, there's going to be some turbulence at the time of the rapture, but we will be kept safe. All right. So we're going to go ahead and jump into our, our lesson today. Wanted to point out the book that we have here that kind of encapsulates encapsulates most of the things that we have talked about already. I will have a link for this in the description below. I might get it to a point where I can put it on Amazon in just a small booklet form. It's about 60, 65 pages. Not a big deal. And again, we've already gone through most of this. So why don't we talk a little bit about the subject that we've kind of already broached on, and that is the Antichrist. I had a lot of questions on this topic uh, when we were doing our live broadcast of the seven Earth's final seven years. Um, it got a little out of hand, uh, but I think that the question, questions were valid. And I'll go ahead and make this bigger. This is our timeline. So we have the Antichrist. 12, 16, 21, the question was, where, where's the Antichrist? Where's, where's the Antichrist? So let's talk about that. Uh, we are going to open up Stellarium and see why we stated this as the date. And we're going to look at the news and take a look at what really happened on that day. So let's back this up a couple weeks and take a look at the comet that we've been looking at for this figure, and that is Comet Leonard. So Comet Leonard passed the ecliptic line on this date, 12-16-2021. We also looked at the IPG GO series. Let me get that pulled up for you all. Um, actually, I can just do it right now while we're sitting here together. And I, they previously did have the thumbnail that we were working off of 
highlighted. It is not now, but that position may have import right now. Okay, so the portion, and we may get back to this. Um, I think that this is really the Antichrist, a head wound, and then we're, we're going to see a rebirth. Um, but the place that we were looking at previously was right here, right at the end, where the Antichrist is coming into his, you know, revealing, if you will. We've got Scorpio, we've got the sun, and we've got Aquila, the eagle over here. Same thing. I'm going to make this bigger. What did I just click on? I'm going to have to look that up. So Fuecus, one of the stars in Fuecus, is what I just clicked on. I'll come back to that, do a little bit of research. Uh, just God moves. That's just how God moves. Let's get this bigger for y'all. Okay, so um, on this day, we had the sun between the tail of Scorpio and Aquila. Uh, if you want to look at some of the previous videos, uh, we'll have, I'll have that linked below in terms of uh, some of the other things from that film that we were looking at. But basically, this was an indicator of when the Antichrist would be expected to be revealed between these two constellations. And, oh, by the way, we're also passing the ecliptic line. So I went ahead and I did a little bit of research. Um, Exalted Lamb had a clip within their latest video of the birth of the Baphomet, the, um, I guess, Antichrist figure. Uh, we've heard talk about it in the past. Uh, as far back as, let's see what I have here. This is 2020. 2019, just kind of looking to see if there was a Baphomet nativity in previous years, because I do remember there was talk about displays. And there have been displays um, for this um, the satanic group, the same satanic group. Um, here we've got, you know, satanic temple holiday display returns to Illinois capital. This isn't the Baphomet, uh, but just, you know, something creepy nonetheless. So there was talk in, you know, the last couple of uh, Christmas seasons, but no real display. In, in fact, I'll just jump on the here to see the images. Oh, okay. Let me see. I think this is going to be from this year. Pretty certain. Yeah. So this is from this year. And you can see I kind of, um, with my search criteria, I'll, I'll take you back to the previous screen. I just tried to make sure, you know, we've got November uh, 2020. And the other page, it was 2019. So just really trying to be very scholarly, accurate, if you will, with my research. But this is what I believe is corresponding to the iPad goat clip. Um, this is a revealing of the satanic birth of their Antichrist figure. Uh, again, I'll have that video linked below of Exalted Lamb. I'm not really a watchman that looks at the Antichrist, you know, the demonic energy, uh, but it is something that we should all be privy to uh, and aware of. Now, I want to look at one other thing, uh, and then we'll do a, a check on where we are today. And again, this is going toward um, the same thread, the same line of thinking. Um, Fox News had a clip on, and I'm going to make this bigger. Uh, we're going to listen in on how the Democrats feel. They're not going to hide their feelings about Mr. Biden's presidency. At least one Democrat 
who's going out publicly to say it. She's not really a big name, but um, they don't want their big names out there saying this. This is something that's going to fall on someone a little lesser at first, and then as it gains traction, per the public's response, we'll probably see more of an outcry from the bigger Democratic Party names. I didn't really see many people that were upset with the job you were doing, and many of which are Republicans. Laura, have you figured out why you lost? Did it really come out from Washington? I think it really has. Uh, unfortunately, my party, the Democratic Party, just conveys weakness right now. It almost feels like elder abuse with what's going on with President Biden. He has a hard time putting a sentence together. I think everyone gets nervous, you know, listening to him talk if he's going to mess up. And what we need always, and especially now, is someone who exudes confidence and competence, someone who sets a reassuring tone. And we're not getting that at the top right now. And unfortunately, I think your previous guest, Carl Rove, is absolutely right. I think it's going to be a bloodbath for the Democrats in the midterm. So, you know, the question is, as a Democrat, I think it's really important to have a strong two-party system. I think it's good for democracy. I don't think it should be one party rule either way. But unfortunately, uh, it seems like we're giving the Republicans ammunition just to shoot us because we exude this weakness. People want to be reassured that government is there for them, not telling them what to do, but making sure the roads are in good shape, making sure the sewage is properly run, making sure that uh, public safety is where it should be. That's what people ex expect. And unfortunately, my party is not delivering this right now. You, um, you would characterize yourself as a moderate. Is there a place for moderates? There's one outstanding, Joe Manchin. He's been vilified and eviscerated by his extreme left. Do you feel the same pressure? Is there a place for you in the Democratic Party? You know, I served as county executive um, in a, a county that is larger in population than about 10 states. And there, there is that pressure, but there's always going to be pressure when you're in politics, when you're in government. The question is, what do you do with it? Do you have a strong backbone? trying to say is the ex-county executive because she clearly states that yes she is a democrat and again we'll have that link below um just trying to get a pulse in terms of where things are at this moment where they may be heading now in order to do that let me go over to today and let's just uh do a search on the sun there we go. All right. So, in fact, and the sun is still between Aquila. It's kind of out of Scorpio right now, um, and that's fine. We have been looking at the comet so uh, at Comet Soho, and we still are looking at Comet Soho. And I want to show you where that comet is at the moment. Let's take a look. One moment. All right, right here. So jumping back to today, January 4th, 2022, we see that Comet Soho is still beneath those wings of Aquila, just as we saw in Revelation 12. The woman will be given the two wings of the great eagle. Aquila is one of the four living creatures from chapter four of the book of Revelation. And in all honesty, let me make this bigger for you. That is where Soho is going to be for years. And I didn't know that jumping to 2023. I didn't know that when I first you know, recognized it. Um, as a potential rapture sign, 2025, it's still under those wings. So 
when we look at the signs and wonders in the heavens, I mean, I was hoping that it would, it's, it's definitely augmenting what others are saying, but I don't know that we're getting additional insight. I think we're getting structure to a lot of prophecies. And, you know, a lot of times when I hear a prophecy on another channel, I will, you know, say, okay, it's this prophecy is probably taking place at this time. Here's my research, blah, blah, blah. Do with it what you will, you know, pray over it. So this is a sign that, you know, we are in the right season. We're in the right direction. We've been given many signs. Now, the next sign that is coming up will be in just a few days. So on January 7th, Venus is going into conjunction with the sun. And actually, it might be closer to the 8th. But God told me January 7th, and there is a very important battle coming up. I don't know how long it's going to take. Uh, Biden mandate Supreme Court. That will begin on January 7th. And I forget which article. Let me see. January 7th. So it doesn't mean that... Um, it's going to be decided on that day, but just as we saw with the first seal, the second seal, the third seal, these things start out slowly. You know, COVID didn't take over the world all at once. You know, the verbiage of chapter six of the book of Revelation, when it describes the first horseman, is that he went out conquering and to conquer. So there's a hint that there's going to be a drawn out, protracted judgment, and we are seeing that with the other judgments as well. We see, you know, maybe a startling event when that a horseman is called out by its corresponding living creature and then relatively calm, and then perhaps another startling event. Um, speaking of, oh, excuse me, another startling event when the tool that that horseman is given goes into, con when the, let me back up. Now I feel like I'm standing like Joe Biden. When the corresponding horseman and its representative planet are in or under or near, typically in or under, the same constellation as the tool they are given, so when it came to the third horseman, it was given a set of scales, the constellation Libra. And when that horseman, the third horseman being the black horseman, the black planet Mercury, was given the scales and went into conjunction with the sun, the day after Thanksgiving, we saw that market drop. It has since rebounded, but the nature of this planet Mercury is that it has a very close orbit with the sun. And many are saying that that, well, many are saying that our economic collapse will be a spiral. And this, I am saying, is very uh, much symbolic of Mercury's orbit. It is going to appear to do something similar and spiraling, that quick, tight circling. So, looking at this, yeah, this looks like the opening of the fifth seal to me. We're going to have a grand legal battle on the largest, most infamous setting, judicial setting on our planet. Okay, this is a really big deal. And for these things to all line up, it's only God. It's only God. And we, for those who are, are new... We have seen that throughout these last months. This is kind of a composite of here's the first horseman. We had Jupiter in the constellation Sagittarius, the constellation with a bow and a crown, just as we see in Revelation 6. And I will pop that up just to give everybody some context. 
Let's jump over to Revelation 6. This is Revelation 12. Just because you all know that it's important to me to bring scripture in and have context. That's a big deal for me. God, it's, it's, everybody has different strengths. And there are some channels, their strength is dreams and prophecies and visions. And that's amazing. That is something I don't have. They can sometimes get into trouble when they get comments about scriptures that they might not understand and then start going in that direction. And it's not their strength, and that can cause some confusion. Uh, God gave me a dream, actually, about that. And with one in particular, well, I don't know if it's one in particular, but the dream was that there was somebody with a big smile but a big hole above one of their teeth. And I realized I was dreaming, and I asked God, Why, what's the meaning of this? I don't understand. And I understood later after I woke up, and I thought, oh, there's a big smile, but there's no root. So, you know, I just, with any message, anything we hear from anybody, we've got to pray over it because our number one source should be Jesus Christ all the time, every day. We don't want to get into a situation like, you know, the people found themselves in the Middle Ages where they didn't understand the Bible that was being read to them by the priests in Latin. We've got to get in the Bible. I mean, there's no difference. People read to the people in English, and they're still not getting it. They're still not getting in the Word. We've got to. We cannot rely on a pastor. Uh, so here was the first horseman, second horseman over here underneath the great sword, or really the Greek is dagger, which we see in the constellation Boots or Buddhas. Uh, and we had Mars, the red horseman here, and the sun went into conjunction. It was just incredible. Same, we already talked about Libra and the third horseman here, uh, 11, 22, 21. It actually, I'm typically a little early when I call things. Happened a little, you know, four days later. I don't mind being early. I'd rather give people warning. And then we also have our two witness asteroids, Pompeia and Justitia. Over here, we've got the three days of darkness. This is going to happen in, well, about a year from now. From what I can tell, uh, there may be darkness sooner because we're going to head into that sixth seal, but I don't think it's going to be the three days. And we've got videos on, on why the difference uh, in the words of darkness that are used. Some is uh, in Matthew 24 and Revelation 8 and 9. The word for, for darkness is a spiritual as well as physical darkness, whereas in chapter 6 of Revelation, it is solely a physical darkness. With the uh, Revelation 8 and 9, we're talking about the fourth and fifth trumpets and the, I believe, the incoming demonic planet that's going to bring in the entities that we will see um, with the uh, eighth, let me see, no, no, with the sixth trumpet, the 200 million entity army. So lots of are you know lots of things being played out in the book of Revelation. We are also seeing in the stars, and I can link the last seven-year video, Earth's last seven years. We did see an event in December with a lot of destruction with the fourth horseman when it was called out by the constellation or the living creature with the face of a man, Aquarius. And then we expect another big... Uh, event, even bigger event to happen in February of 2022 when the sun goes into conjunction with the fourth horseman, the pale horseman Saturn, the satanic one that is followed by Hades, death and Hades. Hades being Pluto and Pluto being over in this area right now. Saturn and Pluto go into conjunction once every 38 years. So this isn't going to repeat. This, this is where we're at right now. We are in the tribulation. We are in Earth's final seven years. And if you want another, 
graphic. Let's get another graphic out here. Uh, if you want to pause it, this is just a recap of what we went over. Again, there's going to be a video linked below. And uh, this is the first four seals. I'll, I'll get the last three. And we just talked about Venus, the fifth seal. There's no horsemen associated with the last three judgments. There's no living creature associated with the last three judgments. Um, with the fifth seal, I believe that it will also be, you know, start off slow and escalate. <clears throat> Hopefully, it's not a fast escalation, but we don't know. We don't know. People are having, you know, words, visions about dreams, you know, people going door to door in white coats and military accompaniment to inject, you know, the, in, the injection forcefully. And we know from Revelation 13 that the Antichrist will cause everybody to take the injection or martyrdom. Hopefully that's an option. I hope so. Um, but that's where things are going. And it's all in God's hands in terms of how fast that escalates. I believe that we will be taken up before that point. But as we saw in Second Thessalonians, I believe it was in chapter 2, that the Antichrist is, it will have to be revealed. And we'll go into that in just a little bit. Uh, so we've got the fifth seal. We've got Venus and the sun. We just talked about that under the wings of the great eagle. Over here, we've got the sixth seal. This is Neptune. We'll go into conjunction. I know, I know you see Jupiter here, but it's Neptune that's in conjunction with the sun at this moment. And it's going to be in March. Again, there's no warning. There's no living creature calling anything out. It's just going to happen. Seventh seal, air judgment. Sometimes people try to group the seventh seal with the first four trumpets, and I understand why, but I believe that these are two different events. Even though they are both, or they are all air judgments, this is going to be lightning and earthquakes. The trumpets will deal more with the planetary objects being thrown at the earth or, or the cosmic objects being thrown at the earth. When we see the angel throwing, you know, the census to the earth with all the, you know, incense from the prayer, I should say censor, not census, censor to the earth with the prayers of the saints crying out for justice. Um, so this is the seventh seal. And this could be, it's interesting that the moon is right here, you know, signifying sorrow. So all of these things are happening, and we're also in the season of that wicked false prophet being revealed. This is the comet that's signifying or representing the person that's going to have the appearance like a lamb, like Aries, doesn't go through Aries, goes near Aries, the lamb constellation, and then right off into Draco the dragon, speaks like a dragon. This is the false prophet. It's going to be pointing people to the Antichrist figure. And we saw with uh, IPG2 goat that this is where we may be. You know, this woman, kind of a Madonna figure, crying over her child that has this head wound. And if, okay, we're not gonna, okay, there it goes. So I don't know why it's automatically queued up to that place when you click on it, but this is what it appears to be that they're saying is going to come next uh, and maybe some revolution. Uh, this may play into uh, the g increase in gang signs and graffiti. I mean, if you have seen something like that, go ahead and comment. Let us know. Let us know what's going on around the world. I know we've got folks from all sorts of different countries, almost every continent. I mean, go for it. Let us know. Do let us know. So we are going to head back to Stellarium and take a look at the Antichrist comment. See where things are heading for that episode. Let me go ahead and I don't know why I clicked on that. Oh, there we go. We want it to, let's go back to today and then one moment.
All right, so there it is. Let's zoom in. We've got the Antichrist comet, Comet Leonard. It came from the constellations. Very interestingly, uh, of course, my mouse is frozen right now. You might see it move, but I can't. Okay, there it goes. Um, so very interesting in that, you know, this comet came from the constellations, excuse me, with the feet of a bear, mouth of a lion, Leo Minor, and the body of the leopard, or they somehow renamed it Lynx. Very interesting that the book of Daniel has figures like this as three separate kingdoms. And for this comet to be kind of a conglomeration of all three of those is telling us, hey, this is basically throughout history, the Antichrist system, all converging onto one person in one particular time. Uh, not the time to be scared, just aware. Okay, so at the moment, Leonard, it did pass through this microscopium constellation, maybe a shout out to um, the DNA biological war that's going on. It's near Pisces, Austrinus, uh, the southern fish could be a reference to a, a, a darker fisher of men constellation. And then we're going to see it just like we did um, in a previous video. It's just going to head over to Sagittarius. So it's going to head over to Sagittarius and it's going to take a couple of months or so to get there, heading right for that crown. Um, we may, well, this may signify, you know, the Antichrist coming into its, his throne. Uh, we'll have to see. These are incredible times that we are living in. Uh, so do continue in prayer over these things. Um, we're not to be fearful. We will continue having the joy of the Lord as our strength and just staying together in these times, helping each other, um, praying for each other. Even before I woke up, or even, I should say, even before I looked outside, I could tell that there was gonna be something with chemtrails today. And sure enough, our skies are full of them. And in my mind, I'm like, when are we going to just start protesting these things? If we are so advanced that we can shoot down asteroids in space so that they don't hit the Earth, that's great. But why can't we keep our skies clean? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. So anyways, let's go ahead and close with some scripture. Lord, please. Well, Lord, thank you for all that you have revealed to us. Please continue to reveal these things in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. All right, so I open the book to Job chapter 14, and starting with verse 14, if a man dies, will he live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait for my renewal to come. You will call and I will answer you. You will long for the creature your hands have made. Surely then you will count my steps, but not keep track of my sin. My offenses will be sealed up in a bag. You will cover over my sin. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing of his word. Be blessed. Amen.